What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is help you be able to write the equation of a circle when we're given different pieces of information. So in this first example, we're given the radius and we're given the center. And guess what? That's all we need to write the equation of a circle. Now, if you forgot what the equation of a circle, there are two equations of a circle that we absolutely need to know. The first one is going to be when we have a x squared plus a y squared is equal to an r squared. Now, this is gonna occur when our center of the circle is gonna occur at the origin or zero comma zero. The other one is when we have a center at a h comma k, meaning there's some kind of transformations that's going like a shift left or right. And the equation for that um, circle is going to be an x minus h quantity squared plus a y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, okay? So notice it's very, very similar. The only difference here is that h and k are gonna represent the transformations. So you can see in this case, we have a radius, right? Which is four. So guess what? That is our r. Right? And then we have the center, which represents those that shift from the center 0, 0 to our new h and k. So this is going to be my h and my k. So guess what? In this first problem, it's actually pretty simple. All we simply need to do is take these values and plug them into our equation. Now, again, we're not going to use this equation because this has a center at 0, 0. We're going to need to use this equation. So now what I'll simply do is just write, all right, that's x minus my first h, which is a negative 7 quantity squared plus a y minus my k. And again, I'm just going to use parentheses. You don't have to use parentheses, but whenever I'm substituting in a value for a variable, I like to use parentheses. And it's extremely helpful actually in this scenario. So you can see that the equation is not going to be x minus h y plus k. That's a very common misconception that students will make. Another misconception that students will make is they'll make four my r squared. No, no, no. It says four squared, right? Four represents R. So again, use those parentheses. Don't replace R squared with four. Because now when I go ahead and simplify this, um, I have an X minus a negative seven, which is really X plus seven, quantity squared, plus a Y minus eight can just be written as a Y minus eight, quantity squared, and then four squared is going to equal to 16. So now an example like this, we, again, we need to kind of identify the information we have. We have the center, right? So again, remember that's your H and your K. And then we're given a point. Now this is a point that lies on the circle. So what can we do exactly with this information? Well, what do we know about a point, you know, that is on a graph uh, or that's on a circle? Like we can represent that as an X, Y coordinate, right? That's X and that's Y. So the only thing we don't know that we do need is going to be the radius, right? Or our R. But if we look at the general form of the equation that we were using here, we have Y minus K or X minus H, Y minus K, and that's equal to an R squared. What we notice is we have X, right? We have Y, we have H, we have K. Well, we have everything we need, we just don't have R. But if we have every all the information and all we need to do is solve for R, then let's just plug all that stuff in and then solve for our R. Now, actually, we don't need to solve for R. We actually just need to solve for R squared, right? Because again, we just want to write the equation is going to be equal to that R squared. I'll kind of explain that a little bit more once we get to it. So for right now, let's just go and plug in our values. And again, I'm going to use parentheses just to remember for what variable I replace each value with. So in this case, I'll have a negative three minus a one quantity squared plus a y, which is going to be a five. And that's going to be minus a k, which is two. All right, you don't need to use the parentheses. Like it's really helpful when you have negatives, but when you don't have negatives, it's not really that necessary. Um, that's going to equal an r squared. However, it is always helpful. And I did say I was going to do it. So in this one, this case, we have negative three minus one, right? You owe me a dollar, you borrow another dollar, you now owe me $4. And then over here, you have five, really just five minus two. The parentheses aren't really helping us. So five minus two is going to be a three squared. Okay, and that equals an r squared. All right, so what do we have? We have a negative four squared, which is going to be a positive 16 plus nine equals R squared. And therefore that's gonna equal 25 equals an R squared, okay? Now, the reason why I don't need to solve for R is because again, like all we're simply gonna do is write the general form of the equation. Now we wanna keep the X and the Y because those represent all the points that make up the circle. All we really need to be able to do is just plug in what the center is and then R squared. So again, we have our center is an H and a K. And then we already have R squared, which is 25. So the final answer here is going to be an X minus one quantity squared plus a Y minus two quantity squared equals a 25. Okay, now in this example, we have something kind of interesting, right? We have no mention of the center. We have no mention of the radius. All we have is two coordinate points that represent the endpoints of a circle. So a lot of times this problem will get um, students confused. And so my best recommendation here is actually to do a couple things. One is just to kind of like draw a random circle, right? So we could say, all right, let's just draw a random circle. These are the endpoints of the diameter. And hopefully that kind of like sparks your memory of like, what does the diameter represent? Like the diameter represents the distance across a circle and it has to go through the center, right? Otherwise it's just going to be a dot line between any two points. No, no, no. The diameter is a special chord. It goes through the center. So the reason why that's important is because if we know two points, we can find the 
the center is really just going to be the midpoint of that graph. And then also we can find the radius either by using the um, distance formula or we can actually do what we did in the last example and just go ahead and um, plug in the values that we have and one of the points. And again, it doesn't matter which point, but either way, the first thing we need to do is actually find the midpoint. So another thing I'll tell students sometimes too, is like, you know, you could also plot these points and then kind of visualize it, but hopefully you kind of recognize here that this is the center, right? If these are your two endpoints, and then this is going to be the center, which is the midpoint. Okay. So the thing that we need to do for this case is we need to be able to figure out what is the midpoint of these two coordinates. And so to find the midpoint, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say midpoint. If you remember the midpoint is just going to be kind of like the average of your X and your Y coordinates, right? So all I'm simply going to do is take my X coordinates. So three plus seven, and then divide by two. And for the Y coordinates, I'll do a two plus a negative four and then divide by two. Okay. So three plus seven is 10, 10 divided by two is going to be a five. And then two plus negative four is a negative two, negative two divided by two is a negative one. So that is going to be my center. All right, cool. So that is my H and that is my K. Once we have our H and our K and we have a coordinate points, right? It doesn't matter which one you pick. You just need to have one. If you know the center and you know the point, you can find your radius or you can find your R squared, which we did in the last example. So now I'm just going to plug all this information in. So, you know, remember it's X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared. Hopefully, you know, once you do more and more of these examples, it gets easier and easier to remember. So I'm actually going to go directly into plugging them in. I, something I don't always or normally advise students to go ahead and do, but sometimes when you're like taking a test or you need to kind of save time and you know what the formula is, you can kind of jump over to this method. Just be very careful though. I would always, whenever you're substituting in a negative value, you still use your parentheses, all right? Because you still will make, our students will still make mistakes there. And remember that's still going to equal here a R squared. All right, so three minus two is going to be a negative two. Negative two squared is going to be a positive four. Um, two minus a negative one is going to be a two plus one, which is a three. 3 squared is going to be a positive 9, and that is equal to an R squared. So 13 equals R squared. Now again, we can't take the square root of 13, but that's okay. We're not trying to take to find R, right? R is the radius, which is square root of 3. But again, for the writing the formula, we just need our center and our R squared. So now I can write, write, this, um, write this in my standard form. So therefore, that's going to be an X minus 5 quantity squared plus a X. Now again, remember, this is a minus a negative, right? So minus a negative is really plus 1. So X plus one quantity squared equals my 13 squared. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was helpful, then you're absolutely going to love the next video I have for you here.